futures traders. And in this video, we're going to talk about the process of going pro and what it means to be a professional trader. So Scott, what does that mean to us? Talk a little bit about that. So at its heart, making the jump from being a hobby trader to being a professional trader and earning your living from the markets is is not easy but it's simple so you need to have some core skills you need to actually have a system that's an edge and you need to be able to trade that system really really well right so getting to that point what does that mean you need to be able to do what we found it's one having the execution skill right yeah. to execute your Every, system. everyone we know that actually makes a go of this and makes a living from it it's what you would call an impressive execution trader yes. like you yes. you watch them sit in front of the screen and they're like bam 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 i'm doing everything perfectly they never make mistakes and if you don't have that skill everything else falls apart yeah, yeah. because even if you give someone an excellent system to trade that's profitable that has an edge that ticks all the boxes low drawdowns and they don't have the execution skill, just don't make apart. mistakes, they won't do well with it. You need to build that skill first. And whenever I've learned a system yeah. off someone else, even the very best systems, I've had to practice for, for three months You plus. have to build up that, execu uh, that execution skill. The second thing you need is to keep proper records. Boy, for us, shoot. it's using a spreadsheet. Um, for, for algorithmic traders, it could be something else. Whatever the case is, you need to keep proper records, you need to analyze, you need to do proper review, you need to track mistakes, track your drawdowns properly. Yeah, it's and that's one, really, really every, Everyone now knows, I think knows, that you have to keep proper trading records and trade journals, but a lot of people just make those trade journals, throw them in the, throw them in the cupboard and never look at them again. There's no point. Right. What is the purpose of keeping trade records? The purpose of keeping trade records is to give yourself actionable intel about two things. And those two things are how you are performing and how your system is performing. So you want to be able to look at your trade records and go, is there some small ways where I can improve my systems? And my experience is that everyone's always tinkering with their systems. You know, there's, it's never done. You're always looking and thinking about new ways, especially in drawdowns. I notice the best traders are, are always re-examining their results and in drawdowns. Yeah, and you know what? Sometimes you do need to adjust your trading, but you need to keep proper records to be able to make that decision, right? How have we adjusted our systems over time? We look at our records, we analyze, we keep track of things, we'll go back and look at the back test, and then we'll make a decision, and we're not just, oh, we're in drawdown, it's been a bad two weeks of trading, let's make this decision to adjust our system. You have to have a process for all of that. So keeping proper, proper records is the second biggest thing. So now we're gonna talk about the third thing you need, which is, of course, having a system that suits you, that you've properly back tested, that's critical. Mm. And so we want to talk a little bit about the kinds of systems that exist out there. Um, why don't you dive into that a little bit? All right, so almost everyone is going to be limited to a sort of system that's obvious for them. And what I mean is that if you're if you have to pick up the kids from school at a certain time every day or you've got a nine to five job then day trading isn't going to work for you um, if you if you're trading a retirement account you're prohibited by law in most places from going short and a lot of active trading and is going to be assets you can trade yeah so you're going to, so you're going to be you can't trade cryptos in your retirement account and all kinds of stuff like that not yet so, not yet <laughs> <laughs> um if you the type of system that suits you is going to be narrowed down and and almost everyone does some of the same handfuls of things. So let me just run through the, the, the common choices. If you're trading stocks, really the low hanging fruit for stock trading is momentum systems mm -hmm. and stock based mean reversion mm -hmm. systems. Mm -hmm. For FX, nearly everyone yep. does either mean reversion or trend following. Or trend following. That's, like, that's it. That's oh. you, you just pick one and do that. For futures? pretty much the same pretty much the same my features you need to be more capitalized so this is really intraday you need to be 25 to 50 thousand if you're trading it in a daily or weekly time frame you want to have 50 to 100 thousand plus to be trading with futures but we trade futures there's a lot of advantages with them um, there's some disadvantages there's some too. Disadvantages the as position well. sizing roll, is not exact. Position you, have sizing to, is not exact. you have to remember a lot more you have to remember more you have to stuff. roll contracts but they're not as correlated as a lot of the symbols in the FX market are with the US dollar, as a lot of stocks tend to be with sectors and the broader market. Futures, you have metals, 
you have the indices, you have bonds, you have your... You, you can know, always find something that's moving. Podcast, you can always find something that's moving, and so that's part of the reason that we're... So, so the, the type of system that you choose, chances are, yep. once you've narrowed down the type of system, if you want to trade a, a, a stock momentum system, chances are it's going to look very, very similar to a bunch of other stock momentum systems with just stylistic di differences. Right. It's going to be like a, you know, it's going to be like a tweak on an existing thing. You know, I don't see many, I don't see many, uh, many stock mean reversion systems that look radically different from each other. I've seen 20 or 30 different stock mean reversion exactly. systems. They're all they all look so they have the same base and foundation. So what we, at this stage, I think what we want to do, right, we want to reinforce that you really need to find a system that suits you, that and suits your, your beliefs, suits your lifestyle, um, the time you have available. That's really key, really important. The, and there's one thing: if, yeah. if you're if you're trying to turn a small account into a big account, right? You have to take more trades. Take there's more no trade. way you can't you, you, you can't be you can't be you, you you can't be making one trade every every week and expect your account to grow real fast doing that. You, if you want to turn a small account into a big account, sorry, you're just going to have to get down and dirty and trade a lot. And trade a lot and be in front of the screens a lot. So that's great. Let's go ahead. Let's show them um, the system that we work with to build execution scale. Scott's going to get, going to demonstrate for that, that for you. Uh, then I'm going to show you how that looks using it with the spreadsheet, inputting results, analyzing the results. Uh, so we're going to see what that looks like as well. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it. All right, let's go do some trading. Yeah. That was All right. So I'm going to show you the system that I trained on, which I used to train other people on. Now, now I'm not saying this is the greatest system in the world. And in fact, I've designed and built much better systems than this. But this system has a couple of advantages in that the rules are black and white. So I get the same results as you will. There's absolutely no, I think this, you think that, I like this one, I hate that one. There's none of that. It's black and white rules. And there's a tremendous amount of decisions to make. It's a technically extremely demanding system. So let me just kick it off. This is the first bar of the day. We're trading it on the SPY, which is the S&P 500 index. Uh, and it, we're trading it on 10 minute bars and it only works in a rising volatility environment and we can reliably get that off the open more often than not unless there's un, unless there's a big announcement happening halfway through the day more likely than not the open will be a, a rising volatility time so we have the first bar of the day and what do we have we have a gap down so it's one of our setups we have a, a, a number of different setups that we place in the system and it's a gap open setup. So if we break the high of this bar, we're going to go long with the stop here, which does not happen. So we don't go long. But we have another gap down. The close is here, and the open you can see is a visible gap. So again, if we break the bar high here, we'll be long with a stop here. Okay, but that doesn't happen. So we cancel that order. We're not long. We're not short. We don't have a buy setup. We don't have a sell setup. Okay, do we have a buy setup? We have a gap open. You can see that our close is 270.75 and our open is 270.77. So we have a gap open sell setup. If we close below the lows here, we will go short. But that does not happen. Now, do we have another setup here? We have a failed shooting star long. If we break the high of here, we will go long with a stop loss here. Here, which is breaking. Do we have a sell setup? We have okay. what's called a so we go sell setup. So we go short on the break of this shooting star. Our stop loss is here. Here. So this introduces the first complication of the day. Trade? We, we are long, we have banked profit, our, our stop here, is, is right and here, we stop and we are prepared to go short if it breaks to the low without exiting our long trade with our stop here. So we have two independent long, we have an independent long and a short trade if that happens. Okay, here we go. We are in our short trade. Our short trade has banked partial profit at 1R, which is approximately here. The remaining half of our short trade is stopped out. So we made one R on half the short trade. We made nothing on the other half of the short trade. So we made 0.5 of an R total. Here we have moved our stop to break even. 
Do we have a long setup? Yes, we do. We have a retest variation by if we break the high of this candle, we would not only be stopped out of our short trade, which we've already banked some profit, but we would be long, but that is unlikely to happen. Okay, here we trail our stop. So we move our stop from break even down to here. And you can see that we were short from here. Our stop loss is here. We've got like about one, two, we've got about a three hour winner. This is turning into a great win. Okay, here we have, we move our stop from the short trade down to here. We have a failed shooting star buy setup. So if we break the high of here, we actually go long and we have a trend trade sell. So if we break the low, we go short again. So we have two short trades running simultaneously. Okay, so we go, sh so we go short again. So we have two short trades running simultaneously. The first short trade, we started off with our stop loss here. We moved our stop loss to break even. Then we moved the stop loss to the high of this bar, then the high of that bar. Then we move that stop loss to the high of this bar. That's one short trade. The other short trade, our stop loss remains here. So we have two different and independently running short trades, which can get really, really confusing and complicated. And we're, we're planning on banking partial profits on the second short trade at about here. Okay, so we've banked partial profits about here on our second short trade and initiated a trailing stop. So both of the stops on both of our short trades are now right here. So we have a very big winner with a double short position here. Okay, now we move our stop loss down to the high because we're trailing that stop. We have a failed hammer sell setup. So if it breaks the low of this candle, which is unlikely, we will go short again. We have an inside bar. You can sell it's an inside bar because the high here is 269.32 and the high here is 269.32. So we do a couple of things. The first thing we do is we move our stop loss on both positions down to here and we prepare to go long with a stop loss here at the old spike high. Spike high. If we're stopped out, we flip from short to long and if we break the low of this candle, we go short again which would mean a third position. Okay, so we're short again three times. So, our first two positions we manage like this. We, we have our stop loss trailed at the, at, the, at the high. The last position, our stop loss is still one tick above the high of the entry bar, which is right here. Okay, so let's see what happened next. Okay, we have not quite made our 1R target. We trail our existing stop down to here on two positions. And on one position, our stop is still here. We have a buy setup, a fake out buy setup. We go long and a break of here with a stop here. So we have three positions open. We have two short positions with a stop loss here. One short position with a stop loss here and a buy setup if we break the high of this bar. Okay, we are stopped out of two of our short trades. We have one short trade remaining and we have three periods to make one R, one, two, and three, and we have not. So we exit this trade at market for about a half an hour loss. And we are currently long. So let's look at exactly what happened here. We had a long trade where we made half an hour. We have a short trade which we got short here with a stop loss here and we rode all the way down to here. We had another short trade we got short here, stop loss here, rode all the way to here. We have a third short trade we got short here and exited here and then we're long here and we can you know, scroll across and see what happened to and uh, and we would have exited that for a small win at the third period. So I'm not going into all the details of the system, but what I hope you can see is that it's a technically very challenging system with a lot of 
mechanical rules. So there's a so there's a set in stone procedure for managing every trade, and because of that set in stone procedure, you can get very very good because you know what good is. Good is trading perfectly according to your rules. The rules are black and white. It's very easy to take hundreds and hundreds or thousands and thousands of trades and use this as a vehicle for generating very very rapid skill development. Hey guys, following up on what Scott showed you a little bit ago, I wanted to add a spreadsheet into the mix because I think what he showed you while that was fun and exciting and showed you know you're following setups, you're marking them real time on a chart. Uh, it's not reality. It's not reality. He lied to you guys a little bit. We got to take a look at reality now. And what we have is we have to include how we keep records. And in our case, it's a spreadsheet. In most traders, I find that's what they use. And I like to have everything for me on one screen. You know, I travel a lot. You know, you guys might be at home, so you you might have two or three screens, and that makes it easier, you can have more real estate. But I keep it really simple. I have everything all on one screen like this. So let's go through this. We have a, we're gonna trade the 10 minute system um, that we trade in the mentorship program. And we're gonna work with this bar that's coming up at 6 p.m. here, Bangkok time. So let's actually go to the left of the sheet and let's do this so at 6 p.m do we have a setup coming up let's see if we have an inside period here looks like we may have an inside period we may also have a retest variation in there a concept cell so that's looking like it's shaping up to be a setup so let's actually mark that as a retest variation concept a cell we're going to put in that the entry is going to be one pip minus the low of that bar so one one three three five six becomes one one three three four and then the high our stop is going to go at the spike high so we have one one three three nine nine is the high so we're going to go one one 340 that gives us a six pip range so we have about five minutes to go so this low can adjust if this falls further which it just did a little bit but we're okay we, we accounted for a pip and so now we wait we have about five minutes uh to wait for this to to close before we place our order but you can see the sheet gave us how many pips we have at risk what our size is it also tells us our one r level our three R level, and then we have places to mark where we entered, trade management comments, period one, period two, period three, um, your exits, exit one, and your second exit. So that way, if you're if you're splitting, if you're taking a small gain and letting some ride, you have places for both. So you can see that there's a lot that goes into this, and you have to make sure to mark everything very specifically. So I just wanted to give you guys a glimpse of what reality looks like in here. Um, and that's it for me. All right, so, so far you've seen me identifying the setups and showing you how my scalping system works. And then you've seen Daniel add complexity to that by keeping proper records and working off the, uh, working off the trade spreadsheets that we use. But as usual, that's not the full story. So there's a number of stages to learn how to be an expert execution trader. First of all, you have to be able to identify the entry setups in real time, whatever system you're using. Then you have to be able to not only identify the entry setups, but place stops and targets, manage trailing stops, move stops to break even as appropriate, and manage both long and short trades simultaneously if necessary, if that's your system rules. Okay, then you need to be able to do that while working off trade spreadsheets or trade logs of some sort. And then after you can do all that, you need to become absolutely proficient with whatever trade execution platform you're going to use. You know, whether that's Interactive Brokers or eSignal or, or TD Ameritrade or, or Pro Real Time or whatever it is that you're going to use. So if I was to go and use a different platform that I'm familiar with, I'd look very, very ordinary. And then once you're an expert at all those things and you're an expert at your chosen platform, then and only then do you trade for real money, but you started off small. There's a certain amount of lessons and mistakes that almost every beginner trader is gonna make, and you can learn those lessons just as easily when they cost you $50 as when they cost you $5,000. 
And so what happens when we start trading for big money straight away is those mistakes become incredibly traumatic. And you know, you make a mistake that costs you $5,000 and you go to bed or, or you don't hit your stop and you get stuck in a trade and it, and it creates this incredible emotional trauma, which in some, in some cases takes a long time or never goes away. So there's absolutely no reason to give yourself that kind of trauma. So what I do with my students is a very step-by-step -step progression in learning and stacking these skills on top of each other. Now you can do the same thing. Now one thing I want you to keep in mind is that the perfect, perfect and most optimal learning environment is when you are challenged but when you're not completely overwhelmed. So if we put too much difficulty at once, it'll all just be too hard. It'll be like being in the ring with Mike Tyson on the first day and you're just getting punched. You're not actually learning anything. So you have to be challenged, but still not overwhelmed. And the other side of it is that you need to be in a very focused state. So what I mean by that is that you need to be absolutely concentrating on what you're doing. You're not mucking around, looking at Facebook, browsing the web, doing this, doing a bit of trading while you're doing. You're not jerking off about which way the charts are going to go you're doing your job and your job is executing a trading system perfectly and you stay eyes on the prize focused on that job your job is perfect execution whether the system win loses or draws and you can't control the market the only thing you can control is yourself in the market so what i want to show you now is one of my students executing he's had about seven weeks of experience when, when we shot this. And so there's a couple of things I want you to look at. I want you to look at his facial expressions and his general demeanor as he's trading. He's very relaxed, he's very calm, the market starts moving quite quickly and I've chosen some difficult tape and you can see it doesn't fluster him. He, he places his stops perfectly, he places his trade entry. The most you get out of him is a little bit of, oh, that's surprising. You know, there's none of this thrill of victory and also none of this agony of defeat that you get when you're not trading with the proper system. So anyway, let's go and have a, let's go and have a look at Peter trading and then we'll move on and I'll show you how to build trading systems. One minute to go. Checking. We still have the same levels. Preparing for the placing the order. It's 391 now instead of 398. I will change that later in the spreadsheet. And we have a buy order. One thirteen three nine one. Thirty eight. Position size. And our ISL is at 361. And our one hour target is at 113421. And half the position size would be 19,000. We are long. 
were filled at 113.393. Whoa! <laughs> We have an outlier bar and we immediately have reached 1R. So I will place a stop. Break even. So I hope you've seen with that demonstration that we've been able to develop an extraordinarily large amount of skill in a very short period of time. That's about six or seven weeks in, right? From, from knowing nothing, he's taken about a thousand trades He's following his system rules absolutely, he's keeping proper records, and he's not flustered in any way, shape, or form by trading with real money. So he is on the cusp of, he's, he's almost, I would like to call him an expert trader, but he's, he's almost an expert trader. I'd call him competent and heading towards expert. Now, is that the end of the story? Does he just do that forever? He could if that was the system that he wanted to trade, but most people are not gonna to wanna to sit down and stay laser focused on an intraday scalping system forever. Most people want a system that they can live with as part of their life for years and years and years. So at that point, we switch. We take that expert execution skill that you've already developed, however you've developed it, and there's plenty of ways to develop that skill. And then we, and we throw that in the bank, and then we go and build a trading system that suits you. Now, what does, that, what does that mean? It means, first of all, that trading system has to be congruent with your market beliefs. So if you, if you don't believe in indicators, you're going to have a very hard time trading a trading system with indicate, which uses indicators, if you, and, and vice versa. If you, if you don't believe in going short, you're going to have a hard time trading a system that goes short as well as long. You know, if you... There's a whole pile of market beliefs that we all have and everyone has market beliefs that we've accumulated and and some of them are helpful and some of them are not helpful but we need to build a system that is that you're emotionally capable of living with and the other side of a system that suits you is that it has to be practical so if you're trading your retirement account planning to compound it out for 40 years you can't commit to 40 years of intraday trading you know, and there might be legal rules about what you can and can't trade as well. And you know, if you if you have a, a nine to five job, you can't be sneaking away to the toilet to trade off your mobile phone. That's not going to work. And even if it does work for a month or two, it's not going to work in the long term. So we have to find a system that suits your lifestyle and the lifestyle you want. Personally, I trade I trade daily chart systems and I execute my systems in 20 to 30 minutes a day. And why do I do that? Because I got into trading because I wanted more freedom in my life. And I was I compounded my accounts to the point where I could earn a living off daily chart systems and I would prefer to work a short period of time and really enjoy my life rather than be stuck in front of the screen all day. So that was just me, you might be different. Now, let's talk about building that system that suits you, that suits your market beliefs, that that is going to meet your your financial goals. Because if you have a $10,000 account, it's unrealistic to say that you're going to feed your family off a daily chart system, which might earn 20 to 40% in a normal year. That's not, that's not realistic. That's just fantasy land stuff. If you're trading off a very small account, you're going to have to do more trades. You're going to have to take more trades and you're going to have to trade intraday. That's just the reality of the situation. That's what I had to do when I started as well. So on top of that, most people are going to be emotionally more suited to either trend following or mean reversion. It's, it's unusual for people to, to want to do both because people are either, in general in trading, are either a bit, a bit pessimistic or a bit optimistic. You see the glass half full types that think that the bull market is going to continue forever and you get the, and you get the other type who think that a top is just around the corner and we're about to reverse. So our emotional makeup, it's very difficult to go against your emotional makeup. If you're one of those guys that's always thinking a top is coming, mean reversion is probably a good place for you to start. You know, if you're one of those guys who really believes uh, optimistically in the economic future of, of, of the world, then probably trend following momentum is a, better, is a better way for you to start. So I have a number of systems, including the ones that I trade, and 
a number of other systems of almost every type taken from professionals and we use those as a base to shortcut your system development journey. So almost every, for example, almost every stock momentum system looks pretty much like the others. There's stylistic differences, there's different ranking methodologies, but they're all the same basic thing, you know? Trend following systems, I could show you the trend following systems of all of the top hedge funds and they don't look that different to be honest. They really don't. You know, mean reversion systems all look pretty similar. I've seen like 25, 30 different mean reversion systems. They're stylistic differences. So what I can do to shortcut your system building journey is to show you every different type. And then you can make a, an objective informed decision that's about what really suits you and not most people trade the system that was the first system that someone taught them that actually works. So they Google a lot, they meet people, they do some workshops, they do some courses and the first one that actually works they stick with that because they know how hard it is to find a system that works. So what I'd like you to do is move a bit beyond that and make a fully informed decision based on seeing all the different types of systems that are in common use and then, and then finding the type that suits you. And the last thing is critical, absolutely critical. I put down what meager success I've had in trading to the fact that I did a massive, massive back test before I started trading for real. And the reason I did this is because I couldn't afford to fail. I was absolutely emotionally unwilling to start again having blown up an account. So I really, I wanted to do a back test that made it as close as possible to certain that I was actually going to make a go of this. This was my last roll of the dice. You know what I mean? Like, like if I failed at trading this last time, I would have given up, honestly. So it, I put it together years later that the other people I know who were successful, um, all of the hedge fund guys, the investment bankers that I've come in contact with, the, the successful home traders that I've met over the years, they all did the same thing. And, I, and, they, and they would talk about their back tests and I'd go, wow, that was an amazingly big back test. That's a time commitment. My first back test took me a couple of months full time. I used to wake up in the morning, get a cup of coffee and I'd do manual back tests, you know, pulling up charts, writing down in spreadsheets, pen and paper notes all day, dust till dawn for months. Now, what that gave me is a real down in the weeds feel of how my system would behave and it gave me this rock solid bedrock of confidence that the thing really was an edge. So what I get people to do, the overview of the whole process, firstly you build this massive execution skill so you know how to follow a system, you know how to place orders correctly, you know how to keep proper trade records and you're never ever ever going to bend your rules no matter what, you'd rather die rather than bend your rules. You've got that skill, you put it in the bank, and you build a trading system that suits you. And then once you've got that trading system, you backtest the hell out of it. You do a backtest that's so thorough that it gives you this real confidence that no matter what happens, in the long run, you absolutely will be successful. Okay, now, let's take a look at what- Hey guys, it's Scott here. Um, it is 5.31 a.m. in Thailand. And after demonstrating Thor yesterday, I thought I'd demonstrate it again. Um, just because. Okay, so let's go through the markets in order, exactly like we did yesterday, and we'll see if we've got any potential setups. So right off the bat, I can see that NQ, the NASDAQ, which is the strongest of the markets, has broken out, retested that area, and is painting... A very nice looking uh, Thor setup. So we would go long here if it hits that. If it closes a, uh, a hammer candle. So we might have to double check whether it's actually a hammer. So we put down here NQ. It's 06. Here's 7027.25 plus one tick, which is 7027.5. And the low is 7027.5. So the low is 707.25 and the high is 7100. 7027.25. Seventy one hundred plus a tick, which is point two five. Okay, buy 
Hammer time. Hammer. Okay. So this is what the spreadsheet looks like now. And uh, you can see that we have 2.51 contracts at 292 pip stop value. Now, we also have a setup potentially in the E-mini, but the NASDAQ is stronger, so it always makes sense to go, if you have a choice between two markets, the obvious choice is to go long the strongest one and short the weakest one, like that's pretty obvious. Okay, so if that closes a hammer, we're gonna take this one, otherwise we'll go back to ES. We don't have a setup in YM. We, we don't have a setup in crude, but let's just check just in case. No, we definitely don't have a setup there. Um, we don't have a setup in natural gas, so we move on. So let's look at the bonds next. And cannot be a setup. Cannot be a setup. Cannot be a setup. Cannot be a setup. Okay, so the bonds we're done. Nothing to do. Let's look at the beans and the grains. So we do the same thing at the same time every day, and uh, and this helps us. Okay, ZW looked like it might survive yesterday. We're long here. We are wiped out now. So uh, I need to check my uh, um, I need to check my broker platform. check the exact fill but ZW let's put it in as 493 and 483 and we have a negative 1R loss I'll fill I'll fill that in properly now but for now we've got a placeholder that tells us that we've lost money now corn is not a setup but you can see we use the vol skip exemption which we discussed yesterday to skip this trade, which would have been a loser. So that trade saved us one hour. So we so we then notice that, and it's easy to do while you notice it is go to the discretion column and find ZW, and uh, uh, sorry ZC and say we saved a one hour loss. So I put that in the uh, the discretion column. So you can see our discretion is is uh, is still quite good. So we've made 4.4R from our discretion this year. Okay, ZL, ZM, and ZS cannot possibly be setups. So let's move on. Let's look at the metals. Now, if you'll recall yesterday, we had setups in gold, plat uh, palladium, and copper. And we elected not to take gold, which, in retrospect, gold has worked reasonably well, but it was the most unappealing setup. Sometimes that happens. Okay, how did how did uh, how did palladium go? We got a fill. We have a sign of weakness. That one still looks okay. So we have a fill here. We are in this trade. Platinum wasn't quite a setup yesterday. That would have worked. Copper. We got an entry here. So we are short copper. I've already filled in my trade spreadsheet. The fill I got was 31 to 60. And silver, we have no setup. So we have no new setups. We just have to note that the setups that we have were filled. Let's move on to the last bit of our work for today. Is... Okay, Euro USD cannot be a setup. Australian dollar cannot be a setup. USD Mexican, we had a sign of weakness here, and then it stopped us out for one hour loss. So we uh, we have banked a one hour loss here, which I will put into the spreadsheet. I'll check my uh, um, check my trade spreadsheets later, but for now I'll just put it in as assuming no slippage. So you can see we've whacked in another lo another one hour loss so the way that typically trend following works is that um, 
you get a string of winners and you get a string of win- a string of losers. That's just the way it works. The uh, trending periods are much shorter than sideways periods, and that's fundamental. Okay, so this one we're currently in the futures version of USDCHF, which is six S. We got long on this bar here. Now. We hit 1.2 R here, so we moved our stop to break even. So our stop is currently here. Now let's check if the stop has been hit. I, I've already checked. So the uh, the high is 94.19, and the low is 94.24. So we didn't quite hit the stop, and we survived. And this trade looks pretty good right now. The the Bollingers are pointing up. Looks like a confirmed bottom is in. We have ourselves a nice trade here. nothing else to do here okay so our daily trading day is done and uh, um, we have one set up for today in in the NQ and we have to take that for 2.5 contracts 2.51 so we'd probably round that down to two contracts um, even though technically it's not that's that's about what I would take as two contracts. This is the downside of futures trading is that you have to get round numbers. So FX can be a lot easier for that. Okay, the total trading day, including me bullshitting a little bit about it, is eight minutes and 17 seconds. So yeah, it's pretty good. If you're not getting the trading results that you want, there's really only three things that can be going wrong. So first thing is you're trading with a bad system. That could happen because there's a lot of bad systems out there. Second thing that could go wrong, maybe you haven't taken any action. Third thing that can go wrong is you've got the right system and you've taken action, but you've hit some challenge and you've stalled out and it's got hard. And what I'm telling you is that the right mentor solves all three of those problems. Now, my advice, my honest advice is that you could do this all by yourself, but if you try and do it by yourself, you're definitely, definitely going to waste years and years going down blind alleys and you're definitely going to cost yourself hundreds of thousands of dollars in mistakes along the way. So what you need to do is you need to find a mentor who's got the exact same results you want and a proven system for getting them in other people and you really just want to hire that guy on the spot. The important thing is to find someone who's a good stylistic match with the type of trading you want, you're wanting to do. So what does that mean? So personally, if you were wanting to be an intraday discretionary day trader where you just looked at charts and scalped in and out all day, I would probably be not your I would probably not be your guy. You know, if you wanted to do penny stocks, I've never done penny stocks and I don't like them. You'd be better off finding someone who actually does that. What else? If you want to be an options person, you need to know the math for a start. If, you, if you're not a math guy, you can't be an option guy. The only guys who do options without maths are the suckers at the table. So don't do that. And I'm not that guy. I'm not, uh, I know the math, but I'm not good enough that I would consider myself an authentic expert good enough to teach it. So who would I like to work with? I, I like to work with traders that are looking for a systematic approach doesn't have to be 100% system, but certainly all the traders that I work best with are more than 50% system and, and ideally 75 to 90% system with just a little bit of discretion in their systems. Who else do I like to work with? I like to, I like to work with people who are evidence-based, who don't start out with a theory and try and prove it, who start off with the evidence and they build a system based around what the evidence tells them is an edge. I like people who are interested in evidence-based technical analysis as opposed to religion-based technical analysis. I don't like the sort of technical analysis where I believe this because someone told me that or because it's been all in the books. I like the sort of technical analysis that says I believe this works because the data says that it works. So if you feel like you might be a good fit for working with me, I'd be delighted to have a call with you. It's an absolutely free call. And what I'm going to do in that call is I'm going to ask you some questions about your trading so far, and I'm going to give you my honest advice about how you can improve and the best route to improve. And we're going to talk a little bit about the sort of trading system that might suit you and your beliefs and your lifestyle. It's absolutely free. 
it'll be a big help to you, I promise. So what I'd like you to do is click the link below and book a free call with me and we'll talk about your trading in more depth. Thank you for your time.